today to discuss um, the reuse and stagnation of how we view transitions within archaeology and how we may be recycling old ideas within prehistoric contexts. Transitions are one of the most heated debated topics across archaeological literature today. Many archaeologists fall into the trap of using their data to further support singular ideas, as I'll demonstrate through the debates around the Mesolithic Neolithic transition. And how new ideas can sometimes be overlooked due to these established narratives and how the focus of work can be centralised. I hope by the end of the presentation, also how we view transitions may be outdated and how we move forward and our approaches to the research surrounding them may have to change. So it's just a quick breakdown of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so what is a transition and how do we define it? The dictionary definition of a transition is the process or a period of change from one state or condition to another. So how do we apply it into our archaeological context? And furthermore, how do we apply it into prehistoric transitions? When we start to review transitions in research, we begin with a bias that eventually affects the outcome of our evidence through how we, how we were taught the periods ourselves and by who taught us. We try to remain in the constructs of academic titles, such as periods like Neolithic, Mesolithic, Paleolithic, rather than viewing data as independent, we create pre-conclusions to try and fit our data within these constricting titles, rather than challenging them. As a result, we tend to fall into established narratives rather than keep challenging and progress in the field. So in prehistorical contexts, in later prehistory, this is easily demonstrated through the movement of stone tools to metallic tools, such as the movement from the later Neolithic to the early Bronze Age in which we not only see a change in technology, but many other aspects of prehistoric society, such as in communities, monuments, social structures. And this is similar when we see the change from Bronze Age to Iron Age, with movements from Bronze to Iron and similar further developments. However, in the transition from the later Mesolithic to the early Neolithic, this definition becomes more problematic. And as a result, how we approach this transition also becomes more difficult. This transition has become a recycled set of ideas that has caused a stagnation in this area of research with archaeologists focusing on proving specific points rather than bringing forward new and challenging ideas to challenge the core of questions that surround this debate. Therefore, we should start to reanalyse these transitions to break them apart from the established narratives and try to look at new approaches moving forward. The debate for the transition to the Neolithic has long been a highly heated discussion between prehistoric academics for many years. Often described as the Neolithic Revolution, this is an integral period of change that formed the basis of modern society with changes in technologies, diet, social structures and lifestyles. Most academics generally either subscribe to two main arguments of thought behind how this transition happened. This focuses firstly around Sheridan and her proposal of an invasion ideas from the continent with an invading influx of migrants from various parts of Northwest Europe. Whereas the opposing idea falls with Thomas, who suggested a mixture of migrants and indigenous people developing the traditionally Neolithic technologies. But what is the Neolithic? It's a period that involved the movement to sedentary life, changes in lithic technologies, the development of farming, monuments, and the use of ceramic pottery, to name a few. But are these technically changes? There is more and more data that appears each year that may challenge what we define as Neolithic, and challenges at the very least the concept of Neolithic altogether. Here in the UK and abroad, there are many very instances of how communities that are classed as Neolithic don't fit the trend in various means, and as academics and archaeologists, we are trying to push recycled ideas. So how can we change this trend, and is there just one transition? The most recent example of this pushing of ideas is the new ADNA data, in which it has already been used to try and support Sheridan's idea of the transition. But we cannot rely on singular data strands that prove our point and ignore other strands that tell a different story. So recycling ideas. So we must ask ourselves as academics, are we just recycling the old established rhetoric of the Mesolithic Neolithic debates of the Sheridan versus Thomas groupings to simplify a complex area of research? With each new piece of data that appears surrounding the transition over the last 20 years, the focus still falls on understanding the modes of change, clumping together complex pieces of data to support these arguments. There are also huge biases that can be easily discerned from research that completely eclipses whole areas of the country such as in the Northwest and more specifically Cumbria, whereas the Southwest gets huge amounts of study. In turn, this creates a disparity between understanding the transition. The Northwest is an interesting landscape. For example, in Cumbria, it's a new landscape that is still used for farming today, has the highest peaks in England, fertile lowlands, and a coastline that extends three countries. It is the perfect area for prehistoric settlers to create encampments with a plethora of natural resources to surround them. But why is there a limited study within this area? For example, there is only one other fine resolution study within this county. So the question is, if we are focused on specific areas and excluding other potential research, are we trying to support these narratives? 
So we still fall back to this idea of transition. Not much is changing how we interpret it and how we move forward. With the lithic transition, historically due to the ephemeral nature of material culture from this period, lithic and lithic scatters have been one medium among many used by archaeologists trying to understand changes from late Mesolithic to early Neolithic. The ideas of the transition and how lithic technology played a part within this has always been a, a subsumed by a greater concern for the overall picture, i.e. the who, what, when, where and why of any broader transition. Generally, there are some marked changes within lithic working traditions occurring between the late Mesolithic to the early Neolithic and Britain. Primarily, the replacement of microlithic technology with leaf-shaped uh, leaf arrowheads, changes from uh, uh, transient adds to plates and polished stone actors, as well as the incorporation of new tools. In the past, trying to compile these technological changes into different narratives or temple of social change have come into conflict with the narrative frameworks. Due to the conflicting ideas of the rate of tempo room broader changes being one speed, or the rate of tempo in changing lithic technology being an entirely different speed. While more recent narratives have um, addressed this issue with more awareness of the specific concerns relating to lithic technology, the specifics of how lithic technology changes is still difficult to, uh, to explain. There is not universal change in technology within Britain. Changes vary from site to site as well as from region to region. Even at a site level, the nature of lithic technology and how it is re uh, represented varies considerably. Whether it's a uh, punctuated period of time or pamphlets trying to understand lithic scatters in terms of changing technological trends is problematic when we try to connect it with a broader theoretical framework of how transitions occur. The background is a cluster analysis graph of narrow blade debitage. Um, Next slide. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Next slide. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, this is part. part. <laughs> the background is a cluster analysis graph of narrow blade debitage from two late Mesolithic structures around and areas from state and west. This approach, two stage cluster analysis in SPSSS software, is designed to reveal natural groupings within a data set that would not otherwise be apparent to the naked eye. The histograms are three sam uh, sample areas of the site are referring to all blade debitage. Yeah, my <laughs> Moving on to the environmental transition. <laughs> As discussed, in the last ads lithic material and changes in technology, it's hard to discern these changes between the late Mesolithic and early, uh, early Neolithic. In terms of environmental data, there are many different stands that can be used to determine changes in period, such as diet, cultivation, farming, climate change, the transition from hunting, fishing and gathering to farming marks the beginning of the Neolithic period. And as mentioned previously, this was the most important change in the history of humanity and relates to the start of permanent settlements having profound consequences for ecology as well as economy. However, in environmental terms, a general palynological indicator that is used to determine the beginning of the Neolithic is the elm decline. Many palynologists use it as a starting point to work from to understand environmental change during this period. This creates many issues. For using the elm decline as a point of interest to determine where the transition happens, it creates a predetermined area of the core that palynologists tend to focus on, rather than looking at overall trends. This can limit palynologists to other trends that may happen further up the core that could be key to understanding this transition. Similarly, with many sites only going to a centimetre resolution, there is lots of potential to uncover key changes within the landscape with further resolution at one millimetre. For example, my site at Betburn, the fine resolution samples we were able to provide uh, data supporting um, Mesolithic and Neolithic communities working in the landscape and changes to the landscape in the Mesolithic um, before it was meant to happen with uh, periods of burning um, and opening of landscapes in the later Mesolithic. Um, so the question then becomes how much are we missing out? All this data we ignore could potentially change our perceptions of transitions now we view these two periods as well as the focus for most reaches have avoided large parts of the country such as the Cumbria region in which only one other key fire resolution has been completed. In addition, how we define this transition in environmental terms, the change would be seen to be the movement towards agriculture which is classed as Neolithic and the idea of permanence in the landscape. However, can we ask the question, has this already happened before the Neolithic? Similar to my research, there are more cases appearing of proto-weeds, a signal in the palynological terms of changes to open spaces in the literature, as well as challenging what we define as farming. Early papers, such as um, Rodman, Richard, and Gillen and Sean, um, all appeared to have, um, if we can go back, 
this, which is a um, grass grain, so uh, it's grasses, so it's opening up of new uh, of, uh, new areas. Um, but we completely overlooked, as they were interpreted from pollen records, it generally described to purposive deforestation, which is compatible with the transition model to Neolithic. However, if they happen within the Mesolithic, is this not evidence of agriculture? As we cannot say that rather than being early Neolithic economic strategies of farming, they are development of late Mesolithic intensity, intensification of wild plant food husbandry. Evidence for permanence is also becoming more subjective. With the use of fine resolution pollen analysis, we can determine yearly changes within which challenge these interpretations of mass movements across the landscape in the Mesolithic. In addition, with the discovery of more transitional sites such as CNDR in Cumbria, of both late uh, Mesolithic and early Neolithic material and evidence of occupation across these two periods, it provides a new look into life across the transition. With the current research I'm undertaking using fine resolution, I hope to provide more insight into this change. Uh, the issues, there you go. Uh, the issues with environmental transitions are as follows: using established biological indicators creates bias immediately because you're looking for specific parts and ignoring huge areas of the core. There's a lack of fine resolution studies, which could easily discern anywhere from seasonal to yearly changes, which would help to determine at, exact, at which exact points areas open up and are used for farming. Um, there's neglect of certain areas around the country. Uh, transitions generally don't fit the data. There's numerous, more and more studies are coming out which suggest that there is uh, forms of agriculture happening in the simplest forms in the later Mesolithic. So the idea of the Neolithic being um, the era of farming might have already happened in the later Mesolithic. Um, the only problem is, is that with wild grasses and seals, it's impossible to tell the difference. Um, and additionally, pollen grains can travel for hundreds of miles, so it's very difficult to determine how far um, the pollen has come. Um, <laughs> 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 okay. So then we have to question, is this idea? Are we just sticking to a two theory ideal? So we're sticking to try and use our research to prove the share of an autonomous and we're completely ignoring um, other, uh, other ideas such as um, all the Neolithic stuff happening in the Mesolithic. Um, there's an inefficiency of research. Most of it's focused in the South, um, so lots of areas across the country are completely ignored. Um, we need to apply broader interpretations to a UK context. For example, in the Scandinavian context, um, lots of uh, Scandinavian and Neolithic groups completely forgo farming and trade uh, for crops rather than actually farm themselves. And we need to ask the question, is there a single transition? Are we just focusing on one general transition that happens over X amount of time, or is there multiple transitions in different areas? So solutions. The solution to current problems can be easily broken down into funding further research outside of the southwest to fully understand the full UK context, such as filling gaps in the northwest. We need to separate out the various transitions, such as environmental, ceramic, te technological, social, structural, etc., in order to see if there's an overarching transition or smaller, more micro transitions. We also must ask ourselves: Is there a transition, uh, or through separating out periods, are we creating problems with understanding complex changes by simplifying them by a title? With the environmental research, there needs to be a movement away from using pan-logical indicators of the decline to see where the transition should be, as the decline is an untrustworthy source of them, uh, as the methods behind the decline are not concrete. Uh, we need to pull away or redefine the old theories of transitions and stop simplifying complex data to fit predetermined conclusions. And we need to reassess the predetermination that we have out in the field, as well as classifying sites by material culture. As the material culture has many issues which surround it, and using it creates biases at assessment stages. Finally, we should always be questioning the narrative and challenging it to see if our data holds up against it and stop using it as a crutch to support our own work. Thanks. <laughs>